welcome to lesson 9, which we've built around chapter 20.3. Um, three phase star connected generators with Dr. Ken here as we work through a two part lesson. So we're going to be looking at um, star connected um, in brackets WYE, that's the way the, a lot of diagrams, international diagrams, represent star. You'll often hear it referred to as WYE, but we're going to refer to it as star. So we're going to look at uh, star connected generators, that's slides 1 to 20. Uh, we're going to skip lesson um, 20.4 for now, and then go to three phase loads. Again, star connected loads slides 21 to 41 and then we're going to effectively put uh, 20.4 and 20.6 together so you will remember this from the last lesson our three phase six wire generator and you might say why six wires Ken well if you look carefully look at the red phase it has one wire in and one wire out so two wires for the red phase in this case two wires for the blue phase and two wires for the yellow phase making a total of six wires required for a three phase AC generator of course if we had to bring all six wires out we would actually need six slip rings on our generator but uh, star connections allow us to only bring three out. Here's a picture of a three phase generator kind of in 3D. And you can see here um, we have a, an A phase, a B phase and a C phase. And each of the coils comes out to a terminal one, a terminal two and a terminal three. And the, you'll notice the inside of each phase is connected to this pinky purple ring, which effectively connects all the one sides of the coils together and brings them out to what we call the common, the neutral, or what we will often refer to as the star point. So when we build the generator, we only actually need one, two, three connections out of our machine and we can use the fourth connection simply by connecting our neutrals together instead of having to bring six wires out of the machine we can now bring just three for each phase and a single common or neutral just to give you a little bit of context Here's a stator, so you can see around here where my cursor is, these are the actual windings, and of course instead of having just three, they've probably got closer to about 300 around the machine, but once they're all connected up in their appropriate series parallel connections, and you can see at the top here, all the connections, and on the bottom, all the connections, you effectively end up with three phases, all at 120 degrees from each other. So that's a how an actual stator looks in a real, uh, in this particular case, a hydro power station turbine stator. Here is the rotor that goes in those kinds of uh, machines. So again, this is the bit that spins, this is the DC magnets, um, which in this case are electromagnets, and yes, that is one complete pole. So you have here on this machine several poles, and on the top you can see some sloped uh, fins. That's a fan that just draws cool air through the machine to cool it while it spins. So it gives you some idea of what goes in the middle of that stator. This is the rotating magnetic field component. 
Then we've got to get some energy to that ro mag rotating magnetic field and we have slip rings. So here you can see one slip ring, two slip rings. So for a hydro alternator, we only need two slip rings to bring the DC in. And here you can see the DC coming in on these buzz bars where I've got the cursor. So each buzz bar is connected across here and you've got one, two, three, four, it's probably eight carbon brushes taking power, DC power to the slip ring and the same on the bottom. So you've got a plus and a minus for your DC, which goes to the slip ring, which powers the large electromagnet that spins inside your AC alternator. So the components we've looked at, we've looked at the outside, the stator component. You can see the stator component here where my cursor is. The rotor, which has the rotating magnetic field. And that's connected with some wires up into here, which connects to the slip rings. And in the very top here, you've actually got a little TACO generator, which they use to control the speed of the rotor so that it outputs the exact frequency required. At the very bottom of our generator, of course, we have the impeller and water comes in and then spins the impeller. The impeller spins, turning the shaft. The shaft turns the rotating magnetic field. Three phase power is generated in the stator and that magnetic field is produced by DC that comes in from these slip rings. So I thought it is important that you're going to hear the terms star and Y A, sorry W Y E, and you're going to hear what is called delta and sometimes also called mesh. So what is star? What is delta and what is mesh? Well, star is connecting your windings effectively in series with each other, creating a star point. And delta or mesh, you are effectively connecting your windings in parallel with each other. So that's the big uh, difference between the different uh, kinds. So star is basically putting out three windings in series with each other. And I'll just do a quick star connected winding drawing here. And it looks something like this. Hence the name star, because it looks like a star. And we end up with a star point. And you can see that this winding is in series with this winding. This winding is in series with that winding. And that winding is in series with this winding. So that's why it's called star and we're keeping our windings in series, it's also called WYE. Uh, so what is delta? Well, delta is looks like this and the reason it's called delta is when we draw it this particular way, it looks like the Greek symbol delta. So the Greek symbol delta looks very much like this. And this is how we connect our windings. And there's our connections. And Greek symbol delta looks like this. So here we're connecting our windings in a kind of parallel arrangement. So we have these two connected in parallel. We have these two connected in parallel. And we have these two connected in parallel. Hence the word mesh. Mesh is just a mathematical term for parallel. So there's a quick explanation of why we use the terms star or why W Y E and why we use the terms delta or mesh just to give you a little bit of context to 
give you uh, a little bit more understanding of uh, why we think about generators and transformers in a three-phase world being connected in star or delta. They Each of the um, connection arrangements has its own advantages and disadvantages. And so I've uh, given you this single line diagram for a generator to load. And you can see here we have a generator, a transformer, a second transformer, then a motor. So very simple. The generator is connected in star. There's your star symbol. And it connects to one side of this transformer. And it's also in star for, for obvious reasons. If you've got a star generator, you have to go into a star load of some kind. So in this particular case, I'll just turn my little um, drawing pen on. Our windings get connected up like this. So we end up with three wires connecting together and the fourth wire, the neutral, even though it's connected to Earth, they're also physically connected together. So we end up with this four wire arrangement. So we've got four wires. So there's our four wires connecting our generator. And the reason we've connected our generator up is because we want to get that star point. We want to be able to keep all the loads, connections all nicely balanced. So generators are connected in star. But next step is we come through our transformer. And, you know, we might be generating something like at, say, 15... KV here from the generator coming out at 15,000 volts but we might be pumping it up to let's say something like um, oh, 132 132 KV for transmission now you'll notice that we've now gone to a delta shape on the winding now the big advantage here is that when I connect two deltas together you should notice that I can transmit all that load and I don't have to worry about imbalances or any of those kinds of things and now I've only got three wires. So you'll find that we generate using four wires because it, we can maintain and balance our voltages and things nice and easily. But we transmit it three wires because it simply saves us money having to run that fourth wire. Then when we get to the load end, you can see we've come back down to star. And again, we've come back to a four wire arrangement. The Earths are connected together, the bottoms of the stars are connected. I'll only draw one, won't connect the other one up. You can see like this. And we've connected our motor up, or to the distribution for our motor, and we've back to using four wires, which means we can have balanced or unbalanced loads, and the four wire system will take care of all of that. So for purposes of generation, we use four wires. For transmission, we use three wires because it saves us lots and lots of money having to run that extra fourth, not having to run the fourth wire. And then we drop back down to star because star offers us an ability to carry unbalanced loads and multiple voltages, which we will get into very shortly. 
So just by way of context, I thought it would be good for you to understand that uh, why we have stars and deltas or why EEs have meshes. It's because we just want to save money in that transmission stage and we can do that by going delta to delta. So star connection proper now. So here you can see our star connection, the grey disc representing our generator. We have winding A, winding B, winding C, and the signals or the power they generate, phase A, 120 degrees later, phase B, another 120 degrees later, phase C, or 240 degrees later. But we've got six winding endings. So we've got a start and a finish, a start and a finish, a start and a finish for each winding. So a three-phase alternator has three windings, giving six connections, as we've already just described. So power can be sent over three lines, not six. The windings are connected into either star or delta. As I've just given you some context, we're going to connect either star or delta to keep the number of connections as low as possible. So here's our star connection. The drawing on the left hand side, I'll just change my cursor again to my pen. The one on this side looks like our star. So we have our windings connected in series. So it's more a connection diagram this one because it looks like its description. But the drawing over here on the right hand side is exactly the same. Same drawing. You'll notice here we've connected all the finishes together on the first one. So the A2, the B2 and the C2 are all connected together. So over here again A2, B2 and C2 are connected together creating what we call the star point which is this one here the neutral becomes the star point and we have all the starts A phase, B phase, C phase providing the power now the point I want to make here is, in lots of exams and tests, sometimes it will be drawn so it looks like a star. Sometimes it will be drawn so it just looks like a simple circuit diagram. So I'm putting a square around, and that one looks diagrammatic. This one on the left hand side looks like a connection diagram. So you've got to be able to recognize both diagrams. You've got to be able to interpret the circuit diagrams and be able to say, oh, that's a star connected because all the finishes are connected together, whether it's drawn on the left-hand side or whether it's drawn on the right-hand side. In a particular way, you need to be able to recognize it. So by definition, the ends or the starts of each winding are joined at a common point called the star point or the neutral. Okay, now we're down to what we might call the important stuff. We've now drawn, redrawn our generator as a four-wire machine. So we have our A phase, our B phase and our C phase and connected together in the middle is the star point and it comes out giving us the neutral. Now the big advantage here is we actually get a particular voltage between each of the phases. So the voltage between the phases has a particular name. It's called the line voltage. This is going to become a very, very important term. So you need to take note of it now. The voltage between the phases is called 
the line voltage. Because it measures the voltages across the lines. These things are called lines. So you've got line A, line B, line C. The next term that we need to understand is the one called phase voltages. That's when you measure the voltage between the neutral and any phase. Because when you're measuring the phase voltage, for example, if I'm putting a voltmeter across the phase voltage, I'm effectively measuring across there. Therefore, I'm measuring the phase voltage. So the voltage phase. Okay, phase voltage. Line voltage, I'm measuring across the lines, not across or between the phases. So a lot of people tend to call, you know, this one A phase, B phase and C phase, which they are, but when we measure between them, we call it the line voltage. When we measure between any phase and the neutral, we call it the phase voltage because we're actually measuring across the phase itself. Okay, so definitions for line and phase voltages. It's easy to get them mixed up because we call each of the main phases A phase, B phase and C phase. People think that the line voltage is the phase voltage, but it's not. You have to think about how it is wired. So line voltage is the voltage between A, B and C. The phase voltage is A to neutral or B to neutral or C to neutral. That's the important thing to remember here. So here's a phase a diagram of a star connected system. And our reference is A phase. So you can see C here. The red phase, A phase is here. Notice we're labelling our phases in a clockwise direction. We're only labelling them. So here's the B phase and here's the C phase. The length of the line represents the RMS value of that line voltage. Sorry, of the phase voltage. So this is the volts phase, I'll just do a VP, volts phase, at 120 degrees we've got another volts phase, another 120 degrees volt phase, and remember our phaser diagram is still rotating anti-clockwise. If we draw a line between A and C across here, we end up with the line voltage. The voltage on the horizontal was the phase voltage. So in Australia, our phase voltage is approximately 230 to 240 volts. And our line voltage between the phases is typically 400 odd
to 415. So you can see that the voltage AC or the voltage AB or the voltage BC is quite considerably larger than the individual phase voltages. So our phase voltages in here, A, B and C are that 230 to 240. But our line voltages between A, B and C are 400 to 415 odd volts. So this is the big advantage of a star connected system. With simple four wires, we can achieve two very different but very useful voltages. So the phasor diagram now just done a different way. And if uh, any of you are into cars and notice that uh, this looks like the symbol for Mitsubishi cars, you would be correct. Because this is the logo they use, because Mitsubishi Electric was around well before Mitsubishi cars. And this has been the Mitsubishi logo for many, many years. So let me just quickly explain the phaser diagram. So let's look at the basic phases. We've still got our A phase on the horizontal, starting at the origin. We've still got our B phase out here at 120 degrees and our C phase up here at another 120 degrees. Phase rotation is still anti-clockwise. And what we've some, simply done here is if we want to subtract A, sorry, add A and B, we've taken the A phase and we've just turned it through 180 degrees. So you can see here it's a little minus sign in here. That's because that is the volts for B phase turned around by 180 degrees. And you can see its color is gray. So the B phase is gray. And we've taken the negative of the B phase and we've projected it 180 degrees in the opposite direction. Then we've simply taken the two phases and we've added them together using a parallelogram. So we've parallelogrammed out here for minus volts B. And we've parallelogrammed here volts A. And when we complete our parallelogram, it's the purple line through here and we get volts AB. So again, in Australian parlance, this is going to be about 230 volts on most applications and the purple one would end up being about 400 volts. So it's the same as the previous um, phasor diagram, just represented in a slightly different way. So we've simply taken and, and uh, transferred the B phase up and then done a phasor addition. Let's do one more just to make sure. So let's do the B plus C. So here's our B phase in grey already solid in. We take our C phase and we invert it through 180 degrees giving us minus C. So this is at 180. There's our 180 degrees for C phase. We parallelogram then our two phases. So I take the blue one 
and I parallelogram in minus VC here. I then parallelogram my volts B. By the way, you can tip to tail if you like. I just like parallelograms. Gives me that point there. Once I have that point there, I can project backwards to the origin. And the length of that line is the addition of those two. And again, that'll be for us on our normal supply, 400 volts. And the volts B would be somewhere around about 200 and 30 volts. So if we did this par if we did this uh, phasor diagram to scale, they would be the voltages that you would get. So that's our phasor diagram showing the relationship of the line current and phase voltages in a three-phase system. The other thing to note on this diagram, which I didn't point out in the previous one, that the relationship between the line voltage and the phase voltage is always 30 degrees. Okay, so once we have worked out the, the voltage for the phase and the voltage for the line, the voltage between phase and line is always 30 degrees. So line and phase voltages in star. In a star system, the line voltage is equal to the phase voltage multiplied by the square root of 3. Okay, so V line, voltage for the line, is the square root of 3 multiplied by V phase. That square root of 3 comes from that 30 degree relationship between the two. So that's where the square root of 3 comes from. It's because that's 30 degrees. So the line voltage is equal to the square root of 3 multiplied by V phase. Rearranging the equation, we can also say that the V line, sorry, the V phase is equal to the V line divided by root 3. So all we've done is now made volts phase the subject to the formula. So again, take a minute to pause the video, go and have a look on your equation sheets and make sure you can find the at least this base equation. The root 3 straight away tells you it's about 3 phase. So whenever we're doing 3 phase, there'll always be some kind of root 3 arrangement. So V line is equal to the root square root of 3 multiplied by the volt phase and the phase is always the volt line divided by the square root of 3. So to embed that a little bit more in our consciousness let's do a quick little example. We've got a star connected three phase power supply has a line voltage of 398 volts so it's the voltage between the A, the B, and the C. What is the phase voltage? So we know that we have a line voltage of 398. We know our equation V phase equals V line divided by root 3 in this case because we want to find the phase voltage. So 398 divided by root 3, which would be 398 divided by 1.732 and it's come out at 230 volts. So very similar to the kinds of things we've already been looking at. Right, just checking up to make sure we're on task. So now we're looking at the currents in a star system. So for the moment, we have a 
three phase generator in this particular case we've not brought out the star point you'll notice that we've got A phase B phase and C phase we've got A, B and C connected to you can see here they're resistors so and we have a neutral point and as long as the loads are balanced that will actually work fine so the line current is the same as the phase current so this is an important relationship to understand So if I draw the current, and I'll do it with a bobbly line, so I draw the current from A phase, and I draw it through the load, and I draw the current back, to the B, and you can see I have a series circuit. So the current is the same in a series circuit. So I line is the same as I phase. I should actually take that all the way through the windings to show the complete circuit, shouldn't I? The current going through the complete circuit. So I phase and I line are equal to each other. So in a star system, the phase current, the current through any phase, and the current through any line are equal to each other. They are equal. So the line current is the same as the phase current in a three-phase star-connected system. So in the previous slide, we looked at phase voltages and line voltages. They're different by root 3. But the currents, because it's a series-connected system, they are the same. So this is the uh, line current phasor diagram. On the left hand side you can see we have a system which is a resistive load and remember our conventions currents stay in phase currents are closed arrows voltages are open arrows you can see an open arrow for voltage here a closed arrow for current there is no phase difference between the current in A and the voltage in A, therefore resistive load, no phase shift. So our currents also maintain this nice relationship of 120 degrees here and 120 degrees here and 120 degrees, but they stay in phase with their respective voltages. But over here on phasor diagram B there's a 25 degree shift between the voltage and the current so we have an inductive load the inductive load is a balanced inductive load because they're the same so there's 25 degrees here between current and voltage and it's the same 25 here and it's the same 25 here. So the voltages you can see have maintained their 120 degrees. There's the 120 degrees for the voltages. Yep. That's 120. But you'll also note in here there is also 120 degrees between the currents even though the currents have shifted by 25 degrees from 
their respective voltages because of the inductive load but they are still at 120 degrees from each other that's because there's the same amount of inductance in each of the branch currents or in each leg of the star so I hope you can see the 120 degrees stays between the voltages at all times in a star system as long as the load is balanced the currents also stay 120 degrees from each other but there may be a phase shift caused by an inductor or a capacitor between the respective voltages and currents so the line current in a phase with the phase voltage is purely resistive in a star connected load out of phase current you can get with a reactive load so starting to just build up the picture of what is the difference between a three phase resistive load and a three phase inductive or reactive load so just to dig down a little deeper now and if we take the slide on the left hand side A we're going to look first at resistive load so phase or addition of currents in a balanced star connected circuit what happens to the currents but we are talking about balanced we've got the same amount of load in both parts so what we're going to do is we get first we're going to add the current so we're adding the currents here we've got the voltages drawn in as references so you know here's the here's the voltages I'll put a little circle around the voltage arrows so you can see the voltages you can see we're in phase the currents are all in phase with their respective voltages and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add up IA and IC so we're going to take AI current I and current C and we're going to add them together and we're just going to use again our parallelogram you can see we've taken the blue phaser and we've dotted it in over here we've taken the red phaser and we've dotted it in over here and we found this point here so going back to the origin on our pink phaser that is the addition of both IC and IA the thing that you will note about the current is I can now subtract these two currents so if I now subtract IB subtract sorry I'm not subtract I'm adding adding I C to the addition of I A you can see if I add the pink phaser to the gray phaser they're the same length but they're at 180 degrees and because they are the same length the addition equals 0 amps so in a resistive currents in a balanced star connected load they come to zero now what about an inductive load well the same applies as long as the inductive load is balanced we can do the same thing we're still playing with the currents 
here's our, our voltage references out here. Add the, add the currents. So add IA and IC. And we'll get the pink phaser. So this is the result of that addition. You'll notice here the B phase is the same length and it's 180 degrees out. So when I add the current I A plus I C plus IB all equals zero amps. So this is true. Phaser addition for currents in a balanced star connected circuit are always going to be zero. So that's the end of uh, part one.